Overwatch 2, Breaking Ball Techs in under 60 seconds, part oh, 1. Oh, I need these. So one of the first things you want to learn as Breaking Ball is definitely wall jumping, which is exactly what it sounds like. You just go towards the wall and press S and space as you hit the wall, and you will do a little bit of a jump. Uh, or I you know can how just to do this, I just can't do it consistently. And press jump without pressing S, and you'll also do a jump like this. So when you get comfortable doing the wall jumps without anything else going on, you can start combining it with other things like a pie drive like this, or you can also get up to high ground like this. Some walls might be tougher to wall jump than others, but if you can do it on these straight walls, you should be able to do it on any walls really. So now that you know how to wall jump, you can start He's using it in other places like this one, so you can save your grapple to get up to high ground. There's so many things you can do as Wrecking Ball wall yeah. jumping. You can get up to Ball is genuinely probably one of the highest skill characters in the whole game. I would, and honestly, in the tank role, the only one I'd say is probably equal or maybe higher would be like Doomfist. Be high places like this. But he's up there. Uh, or you can actually go this way as well, where two walls meet like this, and hold W and press space, and you can get up to high ground like this as well. Follow for Wrecking Ball text. I have never seen that one. God damn, dude. I gotta learn how to do some of those. I gotta learn how to do some of those for this season. Whew. Popular Overwatch opinions. Number one, Mercy West isn't that busted. Like, please, turn that game down quite a bit. I'm begging you. Opinions. Number one, Mercy West isn't that busted. Most yes, Mercy means only rest about three or four times per ten. Yeah. And the ability feels like... That doesn't mean like it's not a busted ability. I mean, like, I'm not saying she needs a rework. That's like her whole kit, but it is and arguably the, ability... the strongest ability in the game. Any game where you can have a resurrection is extremely impactful. Doesn't mean it happens that often, but it is... It, it is insane. Like, let's, let's let's not get it twisted. But, like, Mercy's not good. But, like, the ability's still Four times per ten. And the ability feels like booty cheeks to play against. So, why not just give her a new ability? Number two, I really enjoy Push and Flashpoint. I really like playing fast characters and playing Rush Comps. And Rush Comp is really good in these maps, and I love it. Number three, I Wait, don't think and characters and playing Rush Wait, what rush was the opinion? Push and Flashpoint. I really like playing fast characters and playing rush comps, and rush comp is really good in these maps, and I love it. Number three, I don't think Anna Need is broken at all. I think there's just a lot Ah, just stop cooking right there. A lot of healing. The, the answer is n correct. It's not broken. Unfortunately, it depends is the answer, because it, in this current iteration of the game where healing doesn't really matter that much because it's fast-paced dive and the 20% DPS passive, Basically, healing doesn't matter. You're just all inning every fight. Yeah, of course it's not that impactful because you're not relying on healing. But in the previous few seasons, where like healing and damage was pumped up so high that if you turn off the healing end of the spigot, like think of it as this way: you have a cold water and a hot water faucet flowing into a single faucet. You have them both on max, and then you just turn off the cold. You're gonna get burned. Or if you just turn off the hot, and you're gonna get soaked with cold water. You're gonna freeze. When you have both of them on, it's like a nice warm, you know, you're, you're cooking, you're doing okay. But the anti nade just turns off one of them because there was so much healing and so much damage. That's why it felt broken. And in one tank format, it's just easy to land. So in the game, technically the answer is yes, it's not broken. But because of the way the game is played or was played and the state the game was in, and the way the balance is gone, plus the 5v5 format, yeah, no, it, it was broken. That makes anti really powerful. Number four, I actually hate nanoblading. I find it really annoying having to wait for my Genji to get his blade when I could have nanoed my tank four times in the time. Ah, relax, you're not nanoing them four times, dude. I, I Trust me, I get it. I'm the shit Genji on your team. That's 50% when you have nano. Four times is a little too much, though. Got his blade and Come already on won like three different fights. It's like two, Number five, three, I think Ozhang should be as broken two. as MAGA is right now. If oh, they, nah. If it's only gonna be one tank in a game, then they should be ridiculously overpowered. Let me know some of your unpopular Overwatch opinions down below. You, okay, you almost uh, yeah, you almost cooked actually for a sec. Tank should be stronger than it is. Agreed. Um, Because tank feels like shit to play. Uh, but not in the sense of you cannot kill them and they run you over. It should be more of the balance of surviving. That's it, like surviving. Cause tank just explodes, which is like not what tank feels like it should be, right? So like Malga, you're gonna you're gonna traumatize people. You're like, I'm popular I, I Overwatch think I opinions point, down though. below, and make sure to check me out at twitchtv world. She's right on that one. Malga wasn't broken. People just hated that specific design was powerful. No, Malga was absolutely broken. <laughs> yes, he was. Or right. did we play the same game? Did we play the same game? No, Mago was absolutely broken. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, we didn't. I don't think we played the same game, if I'm real with you.
One of the things people don't realize, and it's not really the fault of anyone because Briggs' kit just isn't explained well in any way, Inspire doesn't work like a radius like Lucio's does. It's not a, there's a circle, and if you're in that circle, it's a sphere. you're getting healing. Inspire is almost like a status effect. So the moment you hit your whip shot, within your 20 meter radius, imagine it like a pulse, like a, a status effect that applies to everyone within that pulse in that moment. So anyone who is within that circle, the moment you make that damage has Inspire for five seconds. Whether you die, whether they step out of it, if they are in it and then immediately fly out of it, or you immediately die, they still have Inspire. It and also, yeah, yeah, so if you, like, if you leave the radius and then come back in, I, yeah, 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 she's right. Status effect than an aura. I've seen people say before that it would be nice if Brig had an aura, like visible aura, like Lucio does, where you can see that circle. Okay. But it wouldn't be especially helpful because it doesn't matter. As soon as you hit Inspire, that circle doesn't matter. In that moment that you trigger Inspire, that's who it gets applied to. It's not like five seconds later, if somebody steps into that circle, they get it. Well, Inspire lasts for what, like six seconds? I'm pretty sure if you walk into Inspire while it's activated, though, you still get it. Makes sense. But yeah, so that's also the nice thing about Inspire in that they don't have to but stay it lingers in your aura too. for all five seconds. The moment they get it, you have it for five seconds. Whether you die, whether they step out of it, what have you. They could do a circle that flashes in her radius. Uh, there is a little bit if you watch. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see. I guess, okay. Yeah, if you just don't reapply it at all. Okay. But if you watch... When I hit, there's like a little burst, a yellow burst that goes out. It's not especially visible. It's not the most no, it's not. demonstrative, but it is there. It's also massive. Like, it's actually insane. Like, you have to be so far away to not get it. This is why a lot of, like, really high-level players have said for the longest time Brig is broken when she is broken. And then, like, lower rank players say, like, No, she's not. She's not broken. Ah, for, like, whatever reason. Trust me. Anybody knows that? It's me. The reason why they don't think she's broken is because they don't understand it, genuinely. So, it is what it is. Big slam? Wait, what? I don't buy! What? Yeah, even the tank. Well, I hear you are on it. Uh, bro, it, look! Look! It, it says that I'm contesting. Uh, it says that I'm contesting. Uh. Why does Kron just have the funniest bugs? I swear to God. I don't buy! What? Yeah, even the tank. Well, I hear you are on it. Uh, bro, it, look! Look! It, it says that I'm contesting. Uh, it says that I'm contesting. Uh. <laughs> you know what's funny? In Overwatch 1, you'd be contesting from like 70 meters from the payload. I don't think we ever got to test this because we can't go back to Overwatch 1 and check. But like, I remember I said this to CarQ because I asked CarQ, right? Because like, hey, who, am I, who the f*** else am I going to ask, right? I asked Karkim, like, dude, is it just me or is an Overwatch 2, like, contest of the payloads much smaller? And we couldn't go back and test it for sure, but I've always had this theory that the radius around the cart to contest is much smaller than it used to be. Because if you don't remember, Overwatch League got played uh, that one season before Overwatch 2 came out, and there was, like, so many C9s that season. So many C9s! Because they were playing Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2, and they just kept... C9ing all over the place. It feels so much smaller. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. I pledge allegiance. Oh, an Aspen. An Aspen TikTok. Also, congrats to Aspen again. Aspen won uh, the J3 tournament last night. I think she won MVP. She was actually insane. So. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Oh my god, it's the f mac and cheese washing machine duo! Oh my Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, dude, these f***ers... Okay, listen, I think they're funny. I think they're great. But I had them in a game where we're getting shit stomp full held. The new... Whatever the Ramatra map is called. Uh, Shambhali Monastery. And we're getting full held stomped. And they're talking about, like, stealing the washing machine from Walmart and how they were banned from Walmart and they needed to steal a washing machine because the last washing machine had mac and cheese in it. Like, the two brothers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, guys, listen, man. Normally, it's funny, but we're getting our asses kicked and i'm 17 hours into a stream i'm getting a little tilted come on guys let's lock the f <laughs> i pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the united, united states, states of america, america. and to, and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, stands.
Oh no, oh, my is off feet. Underground. Underground. Indivisible. With, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Man, did you hear that, bro? Did you hear that? Oh, yeah. It sounded like a bald eagle, bro. Yep, I heard it too, bro. <laughs> I'll get cart, bro. I'll get cart. Bring you, bring you go up. <laughs> I love how you guys just witnessed what way. I, I was... seen, bro. <laughs> Do they have different bits for different streamers? Like, they've never done this in mine. They just talk about food. Boy, that's up. We gotta we gotta follow the line, bro. No, come back, bro. We gotta follow the blue line. The line here. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Oh yeah. God bless, bro. God bless the USA. God bless, bro. USA forever till I die. God bless, guy. God bless. Yep. God bless, bro. Yep. Yep. Honestly, respect, bro. God bless the USA.